or in chapter 1. In this chapter, we're going to talk, talk about some introductions of anatomy and physiology. In this class, is called anatomy and physiology. Anatomy, we study the structure of the body. Physiology, we study the function. Anatomy can be divided into the microscopic anatomy, that use the microscope, and gross anatomy. And basically, it's use your, use your naked eye, identify what's this, what's that. When we study cells, a lot of cells, and this is called the cytology, so study the cell. But in this class, we mainly focus on this part, histology. We study, of, study tissues, what's tissues? A lot of cells together, we call them tissues. All your body cells can be divided into four different kinds of tissues. We will talk about uh, that later. And anatomy depends on you study different part. We have different definition. If you study the disease, called pathological anatomy, and radiographic anatomy means study the structure using the scanning procedure, like using the fMRI, use the PET scan. Every living organism, they can do metabolism, so they are able to produce energy. And they are able to break down a big molecule into small molecule like your digestive system do. It's called the catabolism. They can also take those small molecule, like using the small Lego, build up a big molecule. It's called anabolism. So all living organisms can do this too. They can grow, they can develop, and they are able to respond to the outside stimulus. Their body are able to maintain a stable environment regulation. It's called a homeostasis. And they're able to maintain a stable environment. Our next chapter, we're going to talk about this. They'll also be able to reproduce. All the living organisms, so they organize in this level, start from the atom, we put them together, and small biomolecule, and then we have the organelle, then we have the cells, a lot of cells together, we call them uh, organ. Uh, called a tissue, and you put the tissue together, you have organ, then the organ system, eventually, that's you. In your body, totally, you have 11 different organ systems. And you need to know their functions. Not in today's lecture, but you need to know all of them in AP1 and AP2. AP1, we're going to talk about uh, the first half of them. The first one, integumentary. And that's your skin. Skin is a, it's not a piece of paper. When you cut your skin, you peel it open. It's two meter by two meter square. Uh, it weighs about four kilograms. It's actually the biggest organ you have in your body. It has a lot of function. Your skeletal system and muscular system, these two systems, they work hand in hand together. Our unit two, we're going to talk about skeletal. Unit three, we're going to talk about the muscular system. And on the skeletal system, you have a lot of attachment points. And there are actually attachment points for muscles. So muscles attach to bones. And when muscle contract, they're going to bring a bone closer to the other bone. That's how they create the movement. So these two systems work hand in hand together. Your nervous system, this will be a big topic in Unit 4. That's your long distance communication system, like your head can control your finger and go through the nervous system. Endocrine system, we won't talk about this one in AP1. From here on, that's for AP2. That's endocrine system is another, the other long distance communication system. They produce a chemical signal traveled by your blood, and we call them hormone. So from AP2, the first chapter is this. Then we talk about the cardiovascular system and its function is it works hand in hand with the respiratory system. Your respiratory system brings oxygen from the outside, go into your lung. Then your cardiovascular system takes over. You're going to carry the oxygen from your lung to your tissue. Eventually, all your treating of cells in your body get oxygen. That's what makes them happy. So every scenario you can think about, the scenario increase your breathing rate, it also increases your heart rate because these two systems work hand in hand. 
lymphatic system students are less familiar with this one. Uh, its function is to immune function, lymphatic. So your, you have one specific kind of white blood cells called the uh, lymphocyte. And you have the T lymphocyte, uh, B lymphocyte, and natural killer cells. They all belong to the lymphatic system. They, they fight the, the, the pathogen. Your respiratory system, we talk about that. You bring the oxygen from the outside into your lung. Then that's your digestive system. It's a long tube. It's about nine meters long tube. Start from your mouth to your anus. So in this tube, it's actually non-sterile. And because the food from your mouth is non-sterile. So this long tube. Uh, that's your AP2 topic. Your renal system, also called the urinary system, uh, this system's function is to filter your blood and produce clean blood. So clean blood will go back to your circulation. And a small portion of them, they will go through the ureter and go to the bladder through your urethra out, and that's your urine. So your urine directly comes from your blood. That's why in the hospital, when they do your annual health check, they take your blood sample, they take your urine sample because we know a lot of your body by, by studying your urine. Your urine directly comes from your blood. The last one, reproductive system. So previous, all the 10 systems, male, female, they are the same. This one we call the sexually dimorphic because the male and female, they are different. And also the previous 10 systems, if you don't have them, you die. And this is the only system we can take the whole system out. You can still have the functional, physiological, uh, healthy life. Because these, two, uh, these systems is not designed for you, it's designed for human species. Very unique system. In this class, you're going to learn those anatomical terms. You need to study the, you need to learn the new language because most of the terms come from the Greek or Latin. So you need to uh, put a lot of time to memorize those terminology. And anatomical position. This is anatomical position. And the reason is your wrist and your shoulder, if I ask you which one is higher, uh, you say, okay, well, this one is higher. Then you, you, you raise your hand and it's totally different. So we need to have a, a reference point in this anatomical position. So this is uh, the description of anatomical position. Like you stand, you face forward, and your palms face anteriorly. Uh, your eye look forward. This is the anatomical position. So we talk about different body part. Uh, is we is in anatomical position. Like which one is higher? Which one is lower? Which one is medial? Which one is lateral? We all assume this person is in the anatomical position. In the lab, you're going to study a lot of models. We don't cut the models randomly. We cut them into three perpendicular plane. So they're all 90 degree. And these three planes is called the chrono, transverse, and sagittal. Chrono also called the frontal. So these are these three planes. They are perpendicular to each other. Frontal, also called the chrono. For scientists, uh, they study the head, and they, they like to call it coronal, but it's also called the frontal. So cut the body into the anterior posterior. And this is the frontal section of the functional MRI of the brain, start from the anterior to the posterior. This one, very unique one. You cut the body to equal right and left half. It's called the mid-sagittal. Only equal left and right. It's called the mid-sagittal, also called the medium. If you cut the body to the unequal left and right, we call it sagittal. So this is the sagittal. Cut the body to the left and right. That's the sagittal. So during the test, you need to be careful. I give it a plan, ask you what's the name of this plan. If I cut it equally, that's called the median or mid-sagittal. If I cut it unequally, that's called the sagittal. So all these are the sagittal planes. Cut the, the body into the left and right. And the transverse, okay, transverse is, this one is transverse. Transverse is pretty easy. If you, uh, when you were kids, if you like the magician, they, they cut the body into half. That's the transverse cut. 
So cut into the superior, inferior, higher, lower. This is the transverse. And this is the transverse cut, superior, inferior. So that's the brain. And we, the, we're going to study this bone. This is called the sphenoid bone in the bottom part of the cranium. And these two are the eyeballs. OK, now we have those anatomical terms. These are relative terms. Like we compare two body parts. One is anterior, the other would be the posterior. Or one is dorsal, the other would be the ventral. So let's look at them. First one, superior, inferior. So higher, lower. Like I compare your head to your wrist. That's why I say we, we need to uh, have the anatomical position. So the head would be superior, and the wrist is inferior. Or we say the head is superior to the wrist. Both of them are correct. Then the dorsal ventral, also called the anterior posterior. So anterior posterior or ventral and dorsal. If you choose to use anterior, and you have to come with posterior. If you choose to use the ventral, you need to come with the dorsal. Next one, medial lateral. Let's compare with the center line. Like I compare your nose to your eyes. So the nose would be the medial one, the eye would be the lateral one. So this close to the center line or away from the center line. Next one, proximal distal. This one you, you need to think your body like the you like the octopus. So you have the head and those uh, hands. So they are usually we describe them from uh, about the uh, the limb. You have four limbs. So compare the elbow to the to the shoulder or the wrist to the elbow. So closer to the center, there will be proximal. Away from the center will be distal. Axial appendicular. We use these terms usually when we talk about the bones. So when we talk about those 207 bones, we have the axial bone. And this blue one are the axial bones. And the, the un uncolored one, they're appendicular, so the limb. We have the superficial deep. Usually, we describe the bone, the skin to the muscle, or the muscle to the bone. Like this example, skin to the muscle. Which one is superficial? And the answer will be the skin. But when we compare the muscle to the bone, and muscle is actually the superficial one, the bone is the deep one. Okay, let's take a break.